Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Calabucas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on favorite podcast service, please subscribe. Please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, you probably drive. If you're a typical American, you probably drive. I think somebody said somewhere that there are more cars in the United States than registered drivers. And I can totally understand that. I can see that in California. In fact, that's one of the things I noticed when I first moved to California is that every family had more cars than drivers. So there was a family that we got acquainted with and they had three cars, even though only the mom and dad drove. So pretty much everybody has more cars than they really need. Some of them are fun cars, some of them are work cars, but there's so many cars out there. And living in America, you kind of need to have a car because that's one of the things about America is that everything's so spread out we're designed around the automobile. So everybody needs to have a car. And people can have cars in different ways. Even if you don't have a car, let's say you don't really need a car that often, maybe you Uber all over the place. But cars are essential. Personal transportation devices are pretty essential. And uh, one of the things I've noticed with these cars is that they're trying, the government regulations in the United States are trying to make them safer and safer and safer and safer. And because they're trying to make them safer and safer and safer, they're changing the design of the car to be, to be, to have less and less visibility at the back. And I'm not sure why they're doing this other than this, the safety aspect, but it's getting to me. It reminds me of this Futurama episode where they talked about they had a, a futuristic car race and you had the professor in his racing car he just wanted to go fast and you had Leela in her safe car she was acting as the soccer mom and the soccer mom car literally had no windows it was completely enclosed in a metal box it looked a bit like the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo but it was completely white and it was completely enclosed and there was no glass that could break there was no way you could break out of it and the inside was paneled with LCD LED panels so you could see the outside as if you were outside so that was like the safest automobile that was ever built and if you think about it that is kind of an extension of what we're doing right now I mean when you look at designs of cars the back is getting all closed up who knows we might as well just close up the front too while we're at it safe 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 <laughs> life isn't safe but let's try and make driving safer. So that's the future of the automobile. And the other question I have is that why are we looking at electric cars? Why are we looking at battery operated cars? I think if you ask me personally, electric cars are a stopgap measure. They're not the final place we should be looking for motive power. A couple of things there. You tell you why. First of all, what happens with an electric car is that you're not actually reducing the CO2 that's going into the environment. You're reducing the CO2 that's going into the environment in the actual automobile because the energy is not generated in the automobile. The CO2 going into the environment is generated wherever the energy is generated. But the energy is not generated in the automobile. It's stored in the automobile and used in the automobile, but it's not generated in the automobile, unlike with an internal combustion engine where the energy is actually created in the automobile. So we've moved from a situation where the energy is not created in the automobile, but it's created somewhere else. And you don't know where that energy is created. It could be created in a coal-fired plant. It could be very, very dirty energy. So if you're driving an electric car because you think you're doing something better for the environment, then that's not true. And then if you look at all of the lithium-ion bat at lithium -ion batteries and all of the excavations that need to take place and the disposal of those batteries electric vehicles are actually terrible for the environment in the long haul but you know us human beings don't like the long haul we don't look at the hundred year look we don't look at the 10 year outlook we don't look at the 20 year outlook we look at you know is this going to reduce my gas bills and is it going to improve the environment for me just around me we don't look at those long-term visions and we should 
and we should. There are other ways to power vehicles. There are other ways to reduce emissions. If you ask me, if you really, really care about the environment, you'll go out there and buy a very small displacement automobile or even a motorcycle. Because if you think about it, what are you doing? You're moving one 200 pound or thereabouts individual from point A to point B. Why are you driving a Cadillac Escalade on your own from point A to point B, which uses up a ton of gas, puts out a ton of CO2, when you could be on a motorcycle? Or you could be in a small car. A single dis um, piston displacement or something like that. There are ways. Look at, look at in Europe. There's plenty of tiny little cars in Europe. And people get around with them just fine. See, I think our problem with the automobile and the motive power is that we have to look at every possible way of moving people around. We have internal combustion engines, which are very, very efficient. We have electricity, which is fine as long as it's generated from a clean source. We have all sorts of other methods of generating electricity. Personally, I think we should look at nuclear-powered cars. Why can't we get to the point where we can design fusion-based automobiles with the unlimited amount of power in them? We can get to that point, but we need to think about it rationally and we need to think about it in such a way that we're not trying to drive something out to pull something else in. When it comes to energy, when it comes to motive power, we should look at any of the above. Any of the above for a while. We can't push it out too quickly. The future of cars is that I think we still need them. The only thing that may happen is personal ownership might disappear. We might get to a, a more of an Uber style model where nobody actually owns a car and they just get to use one for a while, especially once they become all fully autonomous. If you had a fleet of fully autonomous vehicles all over the world that anybody could access at any point in time for a small fee, why would you need a car? Why would you need to own your own car? And if you think about it, that would really put a lot of science fiction authors out of work, people who talked about you know cars in the future. What is a car? You see, one of the things that human beings do, especially Americans is that we put a lot of identity in a car that we own and we and it, it it's a reflection of us you know if I drive a, a soccer mom type of car or if I drive a race car or if I drive one of those real noisy uh, Camaros or something like that it is a reflection of me and we have to get away from that idea of your car being a reflection of you but like I say everything takes forever to change so for us to sort of break away from that, we have to look at new sources of energy. We look, have to look at cars like the Mirai, which work on hydrogen. I mean, hydrogen, if you ask me, is the next step beyond electric. And the electric is just a phase, and we need to get into the next step beyond that, and the next step beyond that. There are way, alternative ways of generating motive power in automobiles. Why not a clockwork bicycle? Is that such a thing? Who knows? Somebody has yet to invent a clockwork bicycle. But if somebody has, let me know. I would love to try a clockwork bicycle. I tell you, the thing about personal transportation is that it's going to be here for a long time, if not forever, because human beings will always need to go from point A to point B. We just need to find the most efficient and effective way to get from point A. To point B. That's it for me for today. See you next time and until then don't forget to think future.